Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play One Shot. In the last episode, oh, we learned a whole lot more about this. Uh, oh, looks like somebody's still having trouble with the door again. Alright, the elevator guy. I think we should go talk to that guy first, Amanda. But yes, we learned a lot about the infamous world machine and just... Oh, complete disregard for the fourth wall. Anyway, uh, hi there, buddy. Come on. Come on! Now of all times! Uh, excuse me. Whoa. Y you're... you. Ah, jeez, I didn't think I was gonna run into... The elevator's missing a button, right? How did you know? <laughs> Amanda and I will help you fix it! Seriously? Oh, thank goodness. The evacuees are counting on this. On me. But I've been here for hours and I can't figure out a thing. Evacuees? You know, from the West Apartments. The square stuff wrecked the place yesterday. Oh. Right now, everyone's crowded in the cafe. We really want to get everyone to the surface as soon as possible, though. The library on the surface doubles as a shelter for situations like this. I see. Wait, didn't we find the magnets and stuff in the apartments, Amanda? Fuck. The what? Looks like we'll have to find another way to fix the button, Amanda. Or we could just go find- Holy fudge! Looks like Amanda and I will need to find another way down altogether. But this is the only elevator in the area. We'll think of something. There are those two elevators that Cedric told us about, and I do know where to find them. I mean, possibly. I know what the room with the big clock he's talking about is. It was that one door we couldn't get no we couldn't get past. The clock was dim because there was a now God, it's you again. But, uh, the clock was dim because it wasn't quite, a. Uh, um, basically it was lit up before the solstice update. And now that the solstice update is hit, it is no longer lit up. So now I just gotta remember, I'm pretty sure it's this way. You should leave. Here we go, at the eleventh hour. Shouldn't you be with the other evacuees? Maybe. I wonder if the big clock has reached zero yet. I want to be right here when everything ends. But isn't this... Yeah, I think this is where we're supposed to be. is locked. Looks like it's asking for a password. The word document is on the screen above the password prompt. Alright, be right back then. Well, there wasn't anything new, so let's just try the pa same password as last time. Here. I don't think we can do any anything with them. Not yet. So there's an elevator here, but it won't open because it's stuck on another floor. And then there's the one over here that he mentioned, and this elevator has no button panel. Tapping the door doesn't open it either. This usually works. Wait! The lever is hanging from the ceiling! Can't reach it. Uh, crowbar? Tall person, right. 
we know we know a tall person. We can't fast travel here, so I will jump cut to tall person. Tall person. We found some elevators. What? Seriously? I've literally never seen another one on this area. It wasn't a locked room. Oh. Did they uh work? We don't know yet. One of them has a lever that's out of my reach. Wait, you can help us! What? You should be able to lead, reach the lever, cause you're taller than me. Oh, I guess I am? So, show me the way, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's take this poor unfortunate bastard to the secret weird glowy elevator portal room. Kid. So, you coming? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're here at the tower and- Oh! Neat! Well, looks like the celebrator works alright. I'll, uh, go get the evacuees, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Ah, fuck! Um... What's going on? Oh... Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, no. It- It's the square stuff, isn't it? There aren't any in here, but... I can hear them just outside the door. Yeah! Hold on! Maybe Amanda and I can- No, no, it's okay. Look, it looks like the squares aren't inside the elevator. Yet. You're in a hurry, right? Go do what you need to do. But what about you? I'll figure something out. Okay. Oh dear, everybody we've come to know and love is dying. Stop telling people I'm dead. I can still hear the elevator guy's voice. Okay. Please, you mustn't. The labs could collapse at any moment now. Let go of me! Oh, fuck. Cedric? Cedric, did you do a dumb? Could it be why he needed that book? 
Oh right, we we found a book back back during the first run that had uh friggin' that had Proto's blueprints in it. Ah, a young man with white hair and a green green glasses ran in earlier. That's Cedric, yeah. He said he really needed a book from the back room. Said it was an emergency too. Poor darling looked so stressed out, so I just gave him the book. I hope he's safe. Yeah, I hope he's alright too. With any luck, maybe the lab complex can hold up a lot and can hold up long enough for him to Oh no. Oh my gosh. It that was No. That poor kid! No! Not him too! I'm I'm sorry about your friend. The last time he spoke. He told me to go look for someone on the surface. I... I need to get going. Sweetie, you can't- we can't- you know we just can't let you walk into danger! But... George is right. The squares seem to be targeting a lot of weaker constructs in the city. Only a library has enough structural integrity to withstand collapse. It's best that you stay here until things stabilize. However long it takes. But... But, what about my mission? Don't you guys want me to bring the sun back at least? Even if you do restore the sun, I'm not sure that'll fix the squares. Sadly. Not to mention, even getting there is going to be hard. The world is like this. There's no telling what's going on in the tower. And if anything bad happened to the Messiah, of all people... Oh, that would be dreadful, dear. A friend of mine said something about this forever ago. It's better for the world to die naturally. No living being should have to carry that burden. At the time, I thought it was still her faulty code speaking. But now I... I'm starting to understand. Messiah, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. All this time, we've burdened you with our hope, our faith, blissfully ignoring the fact that you're just a lost child. Well, you're probably more scared of it and more scared than any of us, aren't you? We have been dealing with tragedy for so long, it's just become background noise to us now. But for you, it must be so terrifying. And now you're stuck here with the rest of us. Being held back by the very people you were told to save it must seem so ungrateful. It's... okay. I... When I first came to this world a long time ago, back then, all I wanted to do was go home. Amanda, do you remember? The very first time. I'm not sure how far back it was for you, but I remember towards the end. I actually wasn't sure anymore about going home. Even knowing the world will be doomed eventually, I still wanted the people here to be happy. So, when you told me to return home back then, I wasn't sure. But I trusted you more, Amanda. But then I just came back. You... what? And then I found out about the world being like this. <sighs> Prototype said to forget all the things he told me. And Cedric told me not to think about it too much, but... I... I'm sorry for getting upset at you, back at the mines. Oh, honey, I can't stay mad at you. You're my baby boy. I thought for you to know all that, yet continue doing this. It just seemed cruel. But then I realized something. You really wanted to save both the world and me. But at the end, you could only choose one, right? Yeah. 
If I really wanted, if I really could, if I had the chance, you know for a fact I would have saved both, Nico. Is it really hard for you too? It must be. If the world isn't broken, will that choice still be there? Do you still need to choose between one or the other? But even if it is... I really want to save this world, Amanda. Even if it's more dangerous this time around. Even if so many of the nice people we met were... Were... Amanda... I'm not... I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> oh, honey... That's why... I think you guys should let me go. I promise I'll be okay. Please? Oh, sweetie. You are so brave. Even braver than most grown-ups. It wouldn't be right for us to keep you, would it? Besides, how can I say no to those puppy dog eyes? Well, if George is fine with it. I guess we should let you go now, Messiah. But promise us you'll be careful, okay? Mm-hmm. You guys be safe, too. Alright! Pep talk is go! Let's save the world! Let's, let's go out into the city. We need... We need to find room. If I remember, we went to, like, this back alleyway. Aha! Right here. voice. I just thought it would be suitable for an adorable little fluff thing. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is how are we going to get back to the clock room? I mean, one of the elevators is foobar, so... back at the library. Uh, fuck. I messed up. I don't remember how to get to the other street. Oh, can't go back in there. Turns out there was actually a cut and a, like a, a shortcut through the alleyway that gets us back to the tower. Hopefully, maybe, maybe those squares will be gone? Oh no, wait. Let's see if this elevator works. Bitchin'. Okay. Well, here we are. body was destroyed back in the barrens. Cedric was going to bring him back with the memory disc, but he was in the lab complex when it collapsed. I don't think he made it. Oh. No. There goes our only chance. I... I'm sorry. It's not your fault, Nico. If anything, I should be apologizing to you. There's one last thing I want to do. 
do. Come on, let's go upstairs. Upstairs? Like, over this way? Like, up here? Up here, Rue? You know, this is the tallest building in the refuge. It's my favorite place in this world. I like to look at the far off buildings and imagine what kind of lives that might be behind each of the windows. Can you lift me onto the banister? I want to get a better look. It was depressing for me at first too, you know. Knowing that all of this is, well, fake, simulated. Cedric told me about what happened to your old world. Did he? I'm really sorry about that. I can't imagine how you must feel. The feeling of never being able to go home again. That's probably not all that different from your plight, is it? It really is ironic. You are prevented from going home by the same individual who never wanted to bring you here. Huh? What would that be? The world machine. You might also know it as the entity. Oh. The entity does sound familiar. I think I heard it from the dice lady from another time. Was it the spirit of the world? Yes. But thing is, the world machine was only built to run on abilities of someone else. It was never meant to develop a mind of its own. It was an oversight. My creators specialized in artificial intelligence for so long. It was simply ingrained in his work. <sighs> and all machines are built for the fundamental law. Never let a living being come to harm. Asimov's law, the first law of robotics. From the world machine's perspective, it has to violate its deepest, most foundational instinct. It has to put a living person in danger. It has to bring a real person into a dying world that isn't even real. Of course, the simulation never, never contained any real danger. The eventual intended ending was meant to be a happy one, but the world machine doesn't know that. Really? Unfortunately, sentient machines tend to handle conflicts in their code very badly. The central conflict triggered a self-destructive downward spiral. You can see the physical man manifestations of that everywhere now. Squares. That's the world machine corrupting its own code. My creator says it's largely an involuntary process, induced by the stress and the desire to self-terminate. Your creator knows? Sounds like this has been going on since the beginning, then. Yeah. The disruption was an issue during test runs, even. First, my creator thought the instability was due to the sheer scope of the project. He spent most of his remaining time testing it over and over again, scaling down the story, reiterating the narrative. By the time he realized the actual root of the problem, our world's remaining lifespan was measured in mere days. Oh. The world machine? We tried. The world machine doesn't believe in 
many of the world's residents are real, myself included. The odds are against us. We have no chance of taming it. Taming? I've heard that word so many times. I only know that it's complicated and it has to do with robots, but... For once, I want to know what it really means. That's what I'm here for. Do you know what a robot is? Yeah? No, I mean... Do you know what a robot is? Um... A robot is not a real person, is it? Right. It's a being whose entire existence is code. Inflexible programming with thoughts dictated by someone else's design. They can be copied, they can be mass produced, and they can be assigned all sorts of jobs. And most importantly, they will never confuse themselves with the living. They will always be bound by their code, their knowledge that they are a robot. But this was more of a limitation than anything else. Ah, that makes sense. You can't really build a robot to not follow its own code, can you? People have tried, but it's a recipe for disaster. And in a way, that's what happened to the world machine. The code conflicts thing? Yeah. But while you can't build a robot to not follow its code, Establish a special bond with it. If the test of the strength of that bond is strong enough, the robot's mental capacity will start to develop outside of its programming. It becomes sentient. In a way, it's starting to believe itself as a real, valid individual. So that's what happened to Silver, right? of disbelief on your end, though. You have to fully embrace the robot as a genuine living person, even knowing that they are not. You need to spend a lot of time with it. Treat it like a good friend. Devoting your heart to the robot until it is able to return your feelings. <laughs> I make it sound so easy, don't I? You and Amanda know better than anyone else that it's not. Right now, the world machine is probably really, really scared. This content update involved some pretty deep code work. My creator was able to access some of the source code, you know. He did what he could and established new connections between maps. Those links is to enable you to meet the other two. But as it turns out, the new code confused the world machine to such an extent that it's breaking down altogether. Even though the world machine has always had self-destructive tendencies, it usually restrains itself when you are in the world. It doesn't want to take you along with it. creator wanted was to write a happy ending. Right now, the only hope of saving you is to take you through that ending. But now the other two are gone. I don't even know how we're going to get you there. Oh shit. We should go. Even this place is no longer safe. After it started collapsing, I really thought we didn't have a chance. Fortunately, the robot assembly rooms were built pretty tough. And it actually didn't take me a long time to bring Proto back. All thanks to Father's book. He had my design documents to be compatible with the assembly machines there. All I had to do was scan the blueprints and reconfigure some machine settings. Father really does think of everything. That he does. I'm just glad 
everyone is okay. Same. We're ready to go now, Nico. Okay, so we are running a bit low on time, so next time on Let's Play One Shot, I think we're gonna try and get us that happy ending. I will see you guys then, and take care.